Whether traveling with kids or adult teammates, I want to talk about how gear loadouts can be used as the single most important check prior to any camping, hiking, climbing, or mountaineering trip that requires air travel. Hi there everyone, I'm Jason. In my last video, I gave five tips for ensuring smoother air travel when going on an expedition or extended trip into the outdoors. But I wanted to dedicate a whole video to the single evening in my planning process that provides the most value to me. A gear loadout with the whole team or whole family can ensure that we not only have all the right gear, but also can transition that gear from travel mode to adventure mode. First, why do I get all the participants together for a loadout whenever that's practical? My first multi-week adventure trip was to Ecuador, where four of us climbed five volcanoes, ranging from just above 15,000 feet, nearly 4,600 meters, to above 20,000 feet, or around 6,100 meters. As we checked in at the airport about a week before Christmas, we were told that because the flight was full, they were activating a holiday baggage policy, and we needed to reduce our checked baggage by one bag. This sent my wife and I into a frenzy of unpacking and repacking bags at the airport ticket counter. We were making decisions on the fly about what would go back to the car and what would stay with us. I promised myself that I would never do that again. I began to pack for the most restrictive of baggage policies for any leg of my air travel. But to do that, I needed to make sure I had the right gear and that it all would fit. That's when I started getting my climbing team together two days before our flights. We would get in a big room and everyone would lay out literally everything they were bringing on the trip. And we started to find that A, we inevitably had forgotten something, and B, at least one of us was also inevitably bringing too much of something else. Whether we are with our team of adults or with our kids, of course, we have checklists and assignments of who is supposed to bring what, but we usually make a mistake or two. By being able to physically lay out the gear, we could go system by system. Insulation layers, check. Communication equipment, check. Technical systems, check. And so on. And we would have good discussions. Why are you bringing three changes of socks instead of two? We learn from each other and make adjustments. So we ensured we had as close to all the right gear in all the right amounts as possible. Then, having everything laid out, we began to stuff everything that wouldn't be staying in base camp into our backpacks. Could it all fit? Could we actually make the logistics of carrying our equipment work once we were in the field? And then we packed everything up into our travel bags. Can we get everything in the dimensions and weight per bag demanded by the airlines? Basically, we accomplished three things. One, making sure we could travel as seamlessly as possible through the air travel phase. No last minute gear shuffling. Two, ensuring we could manage our equipment during the adventure portion of our trip. And three, double checking that we collectively had everything that we thought was appropriate to bring. Plus, now our bags were already packed and ready to go to the airport minus any last minute ads of anything that we may have forgotten. Thanks for coming to the end of this video. Please hit that like button, ring that bell and subscribe, and check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find gear lists, all of our videos, and additional thoughts and information. Do you have any air travel stories, things that worked or things that didn't? Let us know in the comments. See you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.